you thankful he loves you this morning? Praise the Lord. If you've got a Bible, if you turn me to 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4. I want to read just a couple of scriptures. I'm going to read the whole text for the sake of time, but 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, I realize the time and and I can promise you I won't keep you long today because there are good sermons and there are long sermons, but there are no good long sermons. Can somebody say amen? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shunem when there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. And so it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who comes to our house regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and, and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and laid down there and he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite woman. He called him in in verse number 14. And he said, what then is there to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. And the scripture goes on to say that God blessed her with a son. He enabled her to become a mother. And this boy was about six years old. He was out hanging out with his father working in the yard. And the Bible said that the, the, the son he died and she took him in to the, to the house and the prophet came back laid over the boy and brought him back to life and he was resurrected. And I want to use this story in 2 Kings chapter for about a mother, about a woman. I want to speak to the mothers and the women in this room today. It will bless everyone, but I specifically want to target every woman and every mother in this room. And I want to show you that there's some things in every woman. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to us. Change us by your word. Encourage every woman, every mother in this room today. And let us realize there are some special things you've placed in every woman. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the set text in 2 Kings chapter 4, the Bible tells us about a precious woman. We are not given her name. We are simply told that she is the Shunammite woman. And she is a precious lady who believes in the power and the presence of the Lord. She was a woman that believed so much in the presence and the power of God that she would invite the prophet to come by her house and she would cook him a meal and, and she would take care of him. And, and she came to her husband one day and, and she began to talk to her husband and she began to tell her husband, we need to create a place in our home where the presence of the Lord can come. We need to create a place in our home where, where God can be magnified and His presence can come down. A, a place that we can pray. A place where miracles can happen. A place where God can show up and, and do what it is He wants to do. And the Bible said that she created a place in her home that was specifically set aside for God. It was a place that she had set aside for God to be in her home. And y'all, if there's one thing we need in 2014, we need some moms to rise up. We need some women to rise up who says, God, I'm going to create a place in my home where you rule and reign. There should be a place where you pray. There should be a place where you worship. There should be a place where you praise. There should be a place where you open up the Bible and let God speak to you. There should be places in our homes where moms go to and the children and the daughters and the sons say, Mom, Mama's going to her place to pray. Mama's going to her place to get a hold to God. Mama's going to her place to worship. Mama's going to her place to read the Bible. Mama's going to her place to pray for me, to seek God for me, to intercede for me, to worship for me, to intercede in prayer for me. God, give us some mothers in 2014 who create a place in their home where they don't just wait to get to church to touch you, but they'll praise you in the living room. They'll bless you. You in the bay, nobody gonna help me in this room. But we need some women to rise up that don't just have church within the four walls, but they know how to get down in their home and say, God, I pray for my baby, I pray for my son, I pray for my daughter, I pray 
wife of my husband. I worship you in this kitchen. God, give us some women that create a place for you. We need to create places in our homes where God can come down and visit us in our homes and not just at church. And catch this. She said to her husband, we're going to create a place for God to show up. We're going to create a place for God to send his prophet, for God to send his preacher. We're going to create a place in our home. We're going to create a place in our home for God to speak to us. And catch this. They went down to the local store. They got the wood. They got the nails. They got the sheetrock. They got the paint. They got the hammer. They got the tools. They got the materials to create this place for God. And I want you to catch this. She needed the miracle of a child. She was believing God to give her a baby. She was believing for God to bless her with a child. And she said, I'm going to create a place for God in my home. But I want you to catch this. When she laid the first nail into the piece of wood, her miracle did not come. When she laid the first foundation for that new room, your Bible does not say her miracle came. And it blessed me to know that God doesn't just bless people the first time when they come, but He's looking for some people that's hungry enough to keep asking, to keep knocking, to keep praying, to keep worshiping, to keep hand clapping, to keep giving God glory and say, God, I'm not going to quit praying. I'm not going to quit worshiping. I'm not going to quit giving until you bless me with my blessing. I've got enough faith in me not to give up on the first day. And listen, I believe there's some women in this room that's got enough faith for what you believe in God to do to say if God don't give it to me today I'm going to bless him tomorrow and if he don't give it to me tomorrow you can bank on it I'm going to be in church on Wednesday blessing his name and if he don't give it to me on Wednesday I'm going to come to church on Sunday and I'm going to bless him I'm going to praise him until I get the miracle I'm believing for and if somebody has got that kind of tenacity I dare you to give God a praise right here and say, I'm going to keep believing until I get what I'm praying for. Because in every woman is a tenacity not to give up. Because in every woman, there's something in her that says, in spite of what I see, In spite of what I feel, I know that if I keep praying, if I keep knocking, if I keep worshiping, God's going to do what only He can do. You see, there's a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 13. The scripture says there was a woman who had been crippled for 18 years And she shows up on the Sabbath day and she gets in the presence of Jesus. For 18 years she struggled being crippled. For 18 years she could never walk right. For 18 years people made fun of her. For 18 years people judged her. For 18 years people said look at what she's done to herself. The humiliation, the shame of being crippled for 18 years years and she gets in the presence of Jesus and the Bible said that Jesus heals this woman and she starts taking a praise break she starts giving God glory and before you sit there and get all cute and say I'd never act like that I'm here to tell you if you were crippled for 18 years if you had been what she had been through you'd be up on your feet giving God some glory too And so before you judge your neighbor and say it don't take all that, you need to check their story and see what they've been through. Because if you had been through what they've been through, if you were hooked on what they used to be hooked on, if you used to smoke what they used to smoke, you wouldn't be sitting all cute in church either. But you'd be on your feet saying, God, I got to give you some praise because you set me free and 
Anybody been through some stuff that can give your God some glory? Touch your neighbor, say, excuse me, neighbor. You ain't going to like this praise, but I ain't praising for you anyhow. I'm about to kick my heels off. I'm about to kick my shoes off and praise God because I've been through some stuff, but he brought me a mighty long way. And the religious people came. They were mad because she was getting praise. She was praising God as she was praising. Because there will always be haters that judge your praise. There will always be people that look down on your praise. And they, these religious people go to Jesus after he healed this lady on the Sabbath. And they said, Jesus, you ain't supposed to heal on the Sabbath. You ain't supposed to do this on the Sabbath. Why in the world does this woman come to you and you heal her on the Sabbath? And Jesus just looks at them and says, For the kingdom is like a seed. For the kingdom is like a seed. And when I read that, it threw me off because Jesus just healed a woman who had been crippled for 18 years. She's getting her praise on, just losing her mind because she just got supernaturally healed. And the religious people are dogging Jesus out because he healed somebody on the Sabbath. And the only thing he says back to them is for the kingdom is like a seed. And I got to wonder, Jesus, why in the world was your response for the kingdom is like a seed? It's like he pulled it out of nowhere and it doesn't make in a sense. But then you got to realize the Lord began to show me she didn't just ask for the miracle to be healed on that day. She had been asking for 18 years for God to heal her. Many times your miracle won't come the first time you ask for it. But God's looking for some people who are hungry enough to say, if I got to praise you for 18 years, if I got to give for 18 years, if I got to pray until I get my miracle, I'm going to pray and believe and worship until I see what God does, what only he can do. Because we got a lot of sissy people in the church today. The only time they want to give God a praise, the only time they want to give God a glory is when they get in trouble. When they get in trouble. The only time you see them at church is when they get in trouble. Can I get a witness in here? There's some people when I see them at church, I know they're in trouble. Can I get a witness in this church on this Sunday morning? Because the only time they come to God is when they need God to get them out of trouble. And many times when you just come to God, every now and then, you're not going to get the miracle God has for you. But Jesus said the kingdom is like a seed. He said if you'll put that seed in the ground, if you'll put that belief in the ground, if you'll put that prayer in the ground. You got to water a seed. You got to fertilize a seed. It don't just pop up in the same day with the harvest when you put the seed in the ground. It takes days. It takes weeks. It takes months. And Jesus said there are some things you're believing for that you got to let me be God and it takes time but you got to keep believing. You got to keep worshiping. You got to keep giving me glory because every time you worship you're watering your seed in the ground. Every time you give me a hand clap, you're fertilizing your seed. You're fertilizing your miracle. You're fertilizing your blessing. You're watering your breakthrough. And I wonder, is there anybody in this room that's got something you're believing for? I dare you to give God some praise right here and water your miracle. Come on, is there anybody in this place that needs a miracle in this room? I dare you to send a praise up and say, God, if you need the address to send the praise, it's P.O. Box praise. You can send that blessing right here. Because inside of every woman, inside of every mother, is a tenacity to believe God to do the impossible even when the odds look like they're stacked up against us. This woman, this mother, was blessed with a son. She got her miracle of having a baby. 
And the Bible said that when this son was six years old, he died when working in the field with his daddy. Because the little boy was hanging out in the field with his daddy. And he began to say, Daddy, I don't feel good. And the dad did what every man does. When the kids get sick, we say, go see your mama. Can I get a witness in here? When they got a stinky diaper, go see your mama. Can I get a witness in here? When you ain't feeling good, go see your mama. As long as they're doing good, they can hang. I said, I don't knock the daddy for his response. He, when the young boy said, Dad, I don't feel good. My head hurts. He said, go see your mama. And not one time whenever he goes and sees his mama and he dies in the arms of his mother. The scripture says that the mother did not take the son to his room. He didn't take him to her room. The Bible said that she took him to the room that she had created for God to show up. Because she believed that not only is he God of the good times, but he is the God of the bad times. And you see, mothers, you need to hear me. You have trouble will hit your home one day. I don't care who you are, how much money you have in the bank. I don't care how good you try to live, how much faith you have, how much you speak in tongues. Trouble will hit your home one day. Death is going to knock at your door. Somebody in the family you love, you will lose one day. Sickness will come. The unexplainable will happen. Trouble is going to come. And the question on the floor is, are you a woman? Are you a mom that recognizes during the tough times he's God? During the good times he's God? During the bad times he's God? Though I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. I'm a woman of God. I'm a mom that believes the same God that blessed me during the good times. He will take my family during the bad times. Trouble is going to come. And she didn't run to her friends during the tough times. She didn't have an emotional breakdown. She said, I know where I got to take my baby. I got to go to the place I created for God to show up. And I'm going to let God do what only He can do. And I want you to catch this. Just three things I want to share with you about mothers on this Mother's Day. Then I'm done because I know you want to have lunch with your moms and all that good stuff. The first thing I want every mom and every woman to realize in this room is that you are the doorway to life. You are the doorway to life. When God created man, He took the dirt of the ground. He breathed on it with the breath of life. And the Bible says a man became a living being. But when man was going to create, when God went to create woman, he didn't take dirt and create woman. The Bible says that he caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam and he pulled a rib from a living being by the name of Adam and created a woman. Everything else on this planet was created by the dirt of the ground. But the Bible said that the woman is the only thing that was created from a living being. Because God was letting you and, I, and every woman and every mother know you are the doorway to life. Every person that's ever been born has had to go through the doorway of life of a mother. Because a woman, a mother, a wife is the doorway to life. You have the responsibility and the mandate by God to bring life into your home. To bring peace into your home. You can bring life into your children. You can bring faith into your children. And what we need in 2014, the devil is trying to hit our babies with darkness. The devil is trying to hit our babies with drugs and alcohol and parties and addictions. And what this world needs is some moms to rise up and say, I choose to bring life to my family. I choose to bring life to my babies. I choose to bring life to my husband. I choose to bring life to my grandbabies. Ain't nobody gonna help me on this Mother's Day. 
But we need some moms and some women to rise up and say, you know what? I'm bringing life into my home. Devil, you got to get out of my house. Depression, you got to get out of my house. Addiction, you got to get out of my house because the only thing that's coming through the doors of my house is life, 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 life. And if you want life in your home, I dare to give God a praise right here and say, God, help me to bring life to my children, to my family, to my home. Because the second thing I want every mom and every woman to realize is inside of every woman is the battle of life and death. The curse upon the woman in the book of Genesis was a woman would have a menstrual cycle to prove that life and death is at work on the inside of a woman. And whatever you feed is what will live. If you bring life death will stop. If you bring life to a woman, the death, the menstrual cycle will stop. But if you don't bring life, death will continue. Death will reign in that body until life comes. And the only one that will win is the one that you feed the most. And Proverbs said life and death are in the power of the tongue. And moms, I want you to realize, women, I want you to realize you have the ability to bring either life or death to your family. You can choose to speak faith or you can speak failure. You can speak worry or you can speak worship. You can speak pain or you can speak praise. You can speak doubt or you oh you can give God a dance in the middle of your dilemma you see you can you are feeding life or death in your home and what your babies need is not for you to walk in and say you a loser you acting just like your daddy you always gonna be hooked on it you sorry just like your butt you sorry just like your ex daddy bang by the name of Bubby can I get a witness in here you are sorry just like everybody else in my life no what they need is a mama what they need is a woman to rise up and say I choose to feed life in my family I choose to feed faith in my family you are the head and not the tail you are above and not beneath baby you gonna be blessed I break off every generational curse off of you in this home. I'm feeding life. I'm feeding life. I'm feeding life. We need women and moms to rise up and feed life and not death. Feed life and not death. I'm closing. Lastly, The last thing I want every mom and woman to realize on this Mother's Day. Not only are you the doorway to life. Not only inside of you is the battle of life and death and whichever one you feed will win. But I want you to realize on this Mother's Day that in every woman is the ability to bring a Sabbath into your home. You see, in the Jewish culture, they still celebrate it today. The day, the night before the Sabbath comes in, it is the woman that stands at the head of the table. It's the only time she's allowed to talk during the Sabbath. But she will stand at the end of the table and she will read a piece of paper. And it says, I call forth Sabbath into my home. I call forth rest into my home. I call forth peace into my marriage. I call forth peace over my babies. I call forth peace into my house, into my home, into every affair of my life. I call forth peace. It is only the woman that has the ability to call in the Sabbath. It is only the woman that has the ability to call in peace into that home. And there's a saying that's true. I don't know if you've ever heard it. But it goes something like this. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. But if mama's happy, then everybody's happy. And it's a good, good night. Can I get a witness in here? All the men just woke up and said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
But only the woman has the ability to call in the Sabbath to her home. And I want you to hear me. The enemy is trying to bring everything he can into your home. He's trying to bring in depression, discord, unforgiveness, addictions, sin, and iniquity. And what we need in 2014 is some moms to stand at the door of their home and say, I drive out every devil out of this house. I drive out every addiction. I drive out every plan of the enemy over my babies. I drive out every wicked thing that would try to live in this house. And I call forth the Sabbath into my home. I call forth peace in my home. I call forth peace over my husband. I call forth peace over my babies. I call forth peace over my mind, over my family, over my grandbabies, over my children. I call forth peace into my home. Because in every woman is the ability to call forth peace. 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 I wonder, is there some mothers in this room, some women, that right where you're at, you'll raise your hand. Say, Lord, I call forth peace in my home. I call forth peace in my marriage. I call forth peace over my babies, over my children, over my grandbabies, over my mind. Devil, you got to get out. Come on, would you stand up with me and throw your hands up? And would you just call forth peace in your home? What we need this Mother's Day is some women to stand up and say, God, bring the Sabbath. God, bring your peace. Bring your peace in my home. No more fighting about the past. God, get the arguments out of my home. Get the unforgiveness out of my home. God, get the talk of divorce out of my home. God, get the worry out of my home. Get the lack out of my home. Get the frustration over how we're going to pay the bills out of my home. And I raise my hands as the woman of my house, as the mom. I call forth peace. 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 Come on, ladies. Call forth peace. Call forth peace over your babies. Call forth peace over your children. Call forth peace over your grandbabies. Call forth the Sabbath. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Come on, just for the next 60 seconds. Can every mom in this room keep your hands high towards heaven? Can you pray for your family? Come on, can you pray for your husband? Can you pray for your son, for your daughter, for your family? Come on, call forth peace. It's up to you. I can't do it for you. You got to do it for you. Hell, I'm a Shonda behind I call forth peace in my home. Sing it, Jordan. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Come on, pray for your family. Every woman in this room should have her hand lifted, praying for her family, calling oh, forth the Sabbath. Yeah. Surround me. Oh. Surround me, oh Lord. Surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence fill this place. Surround me, oh. Surround me, oh Lord. Surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence fill this place. God, today we pray for every mother in this room, every woman for the sacrifices they make that oftentimes nobody notices. God, for the times where they went hungry so their kids could eat. The times when they could have bought their something, themselves something at the mall, but they sacrificed to get the baby something. God, we pray for every woman, every mother who sacrificed for her family to do the dishes, to do the clothes, and 
Never really got a thank you and unnoticed. Father, today I pray for them that peace would come in their home. That peace would come on their minds. That peace would reign on their children's lives. We honor them today. Lord, I ask you to bless every mother in this room with your peace. With your peace. With your peace. With your peace. Now listen. This mother lost her son. But she took that baby to that room and she lifted up her eyes to God and said, it is well. It is well. She chose to believe by faith that whatever God chose to do best was going to be well for her life and for her family. Now, I want every person in this room, whatever you're believing God to do, whether it's a situation in your family, whether it's for Him to provide, I want you to get it on your mind. I want you to lift your hand up to Him. And I want you to by faith say, it is well. It is well. It is well. God, I give it to you. It is well. I give you this situation. I give you this dilemma. I give you this thing I've been worrying about. And whatever you decide to do, God, it is well. Because I know your thoughts towards me are not evil, but they're peace. You have thoughts of peace and not of evil.